Good morning and welcome. I am broadcasting live, sort of, from not California, as I'm walking not to the store. Well, it's foggy and cold and rainy. You're right, I don't live in California. I must live in another state with palm trees. Hello and welcome. It's Friday. It's about 8 o'clock in the morning. It is January 7th, 2022. It is strangely foggy and cold in Ventura County. And we're walking to the store and discussing end of the week tabletop role playing game news. Now, because it's the first week of the month of the year, we don't have a lot of tabletop role playing game news yet. Everything sort of shut down for the hobbies, holidays, ho hobbies, holidays. <laughs> See, I can't talk. And is only now starting to percolate back up. Good morning. Now, obviously, the top story we have is the ascension of Wizards of the Coast digital director Christopher Cook to the position as Hasbro CEO. And yes, I know I am saying his name wrong because actually his name is Christopher Cox. Cox. But really... With a last name like Cox, the insults would just be like shooting cats in a barrel. So, just for the sake of politeness, yeah, he's Christopher Cooks or Christopher Cox. Now, the question, of course, is, is he going to be a cock now that he is actually in charge of all of Hasbro and continue to drag D&D &D and Hasbro in general into the trash fire many people believe Wizards of the Coast is right now? Or will he... Instead, actually, maybe having seen the responses to the Wizards of the Coast's direction, maybe change course in time for the 2024 and whatever's going to happen in 2024 from Wizards of the Coast. There's three possible outcomes that I foresee with Mr. Cook's. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, dog. <laughs> With Mr. Cooks as CEO. One, having seen the direction Wizards of the Coast is going, having seen the direction and responses to Wizards of the Coast changes, especially over this year, he may say, you know what? Let's pull the reins on what's going on. Let's maybe rethink some of the choices we've made. Sales are down. We're getting negative responses, even from 5e players. Critical Role is looking like they're going to abandon us. D&D Beyond is looking like they're going to abandon us. Maybe, you know, we haven't been nominated for an award in years. We haven't been nominated for Best Of in years or Most Anticipated in years. Maybe we need to rethink the direction of our product line, especially which is the Coast product line. And now that I'm CEO, I want to make a lot of money for the shareholders. So yeah, because when the 5e fans start complaining about 5e, you know something's going wrong. Second possible outcome, he will get to the position of CEO and say, hey, you know what? Everything we're doing in Wizards of the Coast seems to work. So let's just change that to every product we do. Let's make politically correct woke Barbie. Let's make politically correct woke Bakugan. Let's make politically correct woke G.I. Joe and Transformers. Every aspect of Hasbro should now adopt the Wizards of the Coast mindset. Even though that mindset is starting to fail, Wizards of the Coast. The third possible outcome is even worse. He might dive headfirst into the trash fire and say, fuck all the IPs. G.I. Joe and Transformers and Power Rangers aren't making us any money. Let's just shelve them and devote all of Hasbro's time and energy to pushing the Dungeons and Dragons product line and pushing the Dungeons and Dragons 5e narrative. Now, of course, my big fear is that the Essence D20 line, which is currently being handled by Renegade Studios, 
and we now have an official date for the first product uh gi joe the role-playing game they will say you know what we want to bring the gi joe transformers power rangers my little pony license back to hasbro we don't want you to do it renegade we're going to violate our contract and instead we're going to have wizards of the coast do those games which you know wizards of the coast will fuck up so obviously that is the number one story going on in the tabletop role-playing game news christopher cook or christopher cox is the new ceo of hasbro and what direction will he take it now if the stock market is any prediction, Wizards of the Coast stock dropped yesterday after the announcement of Christopher Cox. Uh, Wizards of the Coast stock was selling for about $115 a share before the announcement. It dropped $12 after the announcement. So, and as any, and it looks like it's continued to drop. I haven't checked this morning, but yeah, being as I have one share of Hasbro stock. <laughs> Moving on, of course, the next actual story that we have so far for 2022 tabletop role playing game news is basically leftovers from 2021. Best of, most anticipated stuff like that. Everybody's putting out their best of tabletop role playing game lists on their most anticipated role-playing game list. We have another most anticipated role-playing games for 2022 list. Uh, this one is from a British comic book site of all things. And again, it lists the Blade Runner tabletop role-playing game from Free League as the number one anticipated role-playing game for 2022. Now, obviously, the list of role-playing games for 2022 that we have as of today is in no way complete. There could be games coming down the pike, or they're going to be kickstarted, or going to be announced that, you know, we have no way of predicting. So we can say as of today, this is what the industry looks like. But tomorrow, somebody could say, hey, I'm making a Thunder of the Barbarian officially licensed tabletop role-playing game that's coming out in... June and you know everybody's going to be like oh that's my most anticipated game so number one on the list for most anticipated game but pretty much number one on every list for most anticipated tabletop role playing game for 2022 Blade Runner tabletop role playing game from Free League now when I first heard this yeah I was like too late why is there a market now for a you know an IP that really hasn't been relevant since the 80s and there hasn't been any movement in the Blade Runner universe. I mean, the second movie did awful. The books haven't really sold. Nothing really came of the uh, animated series. So, yeah, what's what's going on? But apparently there is either an extreme nostalgia love or people feel that Free League will do something really great with it or just the fact that Cyberpunk seems to be in again mostly because of cyberpunk 2027 and cyberpunk red and all the cyberpunk games that seem to be coming out again and because let's face it everything that gibson predicted and everything that was predicted in blade runner has pretty much come true we don't have artificial humans yet but we're pretty damn close we don't have flying cars yet but we're getting close and as for genetic modifying and cybernetics uh yeah that's already a thing and it's only going to continue to advance. Um, so, yeah. Maybe that's why. I don't know. Uh, number two most anticipated tabletop role-playing game for 2022 is Avatar. They powered by the apocalypse. And the record-breaking $9.6 million Kickstarter. Highest Kickstarter ever for a tabletop role-playing game. Yeah, 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 but the $10 million for Critical Role. That was for the animated cartoon. Nothing to do with the Critical Role role-playing game. Uh, number three, and so on, are other games that we've already talked about. Interesting, again, is on every list for most anticipated tabletop role-playing game for 2022, not a single Wizards of the Coast product. Not a single 
Wizards of the Coast product is anywhere on any list or any nominations for awards for 2022. No one in the industry is excited or anticipating any of the two, three products that we know is coming from Wizards of the Coast. In regards to Wizards of the Coast, Wizards of the Coast has started to release some of the art from their first product for 2022, the gift set with Tasha's, Xanther's, and Mordekainen's Menagerie of Monsters, a book you do not need. The art is, well, it's nice art. It's very cartoony. It doesn't really scream Dungeons and Dragons. It sort of expresses the current direction where Wizards of the Coast wants D&D to go. And the reaction to the art has been extremely negative. In fact, my favorite reaction was from a 5e player who, upon seeing the art, responded to, I get it, Wizards of the Coast, your character is casting Missile of Pandering. But instead of pandering, why don't you actually make product the audience wants? So even 5e players, again, are saying, this is not what we want. This art doesn't express the game we want to play anymore. So what are you doing, Wizards of the Coast, if this art comes out for your, new, your first product and people are going, this is awful, this isn't D&D, this is pandering, this isn't what I want. And that's coming from 5e players. So yes, that's the second story for tabletop role-playing games is the most anticipated tabletop role-playing games for 2022. Now, that's not to say there aren't 5e products that is being anticipated. It's just not Wizards of the Coast. The forthcoming new Margaret Weiss, Tracy Hickman, Sky Pirates of Aberex, I think that's how it's pronounced, is on the list. It's like the eighth down, but it's still highly anticipated because it's Tracy and Margaret making new steampunky product line for D&D. Yeah, it looks a lot like Eberron, but it's more like Sky Pirates, so then, you know, robots. But again, it has that arcane punk, steampunk, flying ship mentality. So we'll see how well it does. We know that Joe Mangiolio is on board with that. I probably just said that name wrong, too. It's like in the top five for most anticipated, but it's not a 5e product. Also, we know that there is a not 5e book coming out from the Critical Role, the complete revised new guide to Taldori, not being put out by Wizards of the Coast, not on any anticipated list, but being published by them in no relation to Wizards of the Coast whatsoever. What does that mean? Well, I think we know what I think it means, which is the topic of a separate vlog, which we'll either do today or tomorrow. Well, except I don't do weekends anymore. But yeah, watching what Critical Role does this year uh, is going to definitely be one of the beacons we can hang our kite to for what direction Wizards of the Coast is going to go and what direction 5e is going to go. But really, it all depends on what choices Christopher Cox makes. And isn't it interesting to all the scions of Gygax that a not a single 5e product, again, not in any way anticipated, not nominated for any awards yet. Nothing from Wizards of the Coast is even on the radar of the actual industry. And as for best tabletop role-playing games of 2021, nowhere on the list. Nowhere on the list. Anywhere from Critical Role, anything from Wizards of the Coast. Sorry. You're, you're, you're not listed as desirable anymore, D&D, &D, by the industry. Yes, you're making money, but you ain't making as much money as you were last year. And I think we will continue to see that direction. But I could be wrong. And that's pretty much it for the news for the end of the week. Nothing really going on in the industry yet. There's a lot of minor shots fired and insults and trolling going on of course i've already been trolled this week there's the continuing dust up of youtubers between that one and that one and that one you can follow all this 
on the various channels that engage in this. This is not really a topic I want to discuss, unless of course it's something you want me to discuss. Then I will happily dive back into the controversy, anger aspect of the product line. But until next time, I have been your guide to all the tabletop role-playing game news, weather, sports, and general internet nonsense that is the out of shape OGGM. Here I am, not walking to the store, because I don't live in California. If you appreciate this content, let me know. If you don't appreciate this content, let me know. If there's something you want to hear me talk about, let me know. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Help me hit 1,000 subs by August 4th. Till next time, stay warm and see ya.